What is momentum? When we say momentum, it is the tendency of a moving object to continue moving at a constant velocity. It's a measure of one's motion. In other words, it is inertia in motion. Another term for momentum is translational momentum or linear momentum. Remember this, all objects in motion possess momentum. And the amount of momentum depends on two variables. What are these variables? The first one is how much object is moving where it refers to the mass. Second is how fast the object is moving, which refers to the velocity of the object. Therefore, we can say that momentum is mass in motion. And remember, all objects have mass. And a moving object has momentum since its mass is in motion. Since momentum is the mass in motion, momentum therefore is the product of mass of the object and its velocity. Mathematically, we can say that it is P equals M multiplied by V, where M is the mass of the object which is measured in kilograms. V is the velocity and is measured in meters per second. Lastly, P, which is the momentum, and the SI unit for that is kilograms times meters per second. Take note, two objects with equal velocities but different masses have different amounts of momentum. And two objects with equal masses but different velocities have different amounts of momentum. In our example, despite having equal velocity which is 25 meters per second, the truck has a higher momentum than the car because of its mass. We all know that a heavy truck is harder to stop than a small car moving at the same speed, which is 25 meters per second in our example. We state this fact by saying that the truck has more momentum than the car. To apply the concept of momentum, let's solve this simple problem. Which has a greater momentum? A bowling ball having a mass of 5 kilograms moving at 0.4 meters per second or a baseball having a mass of 0.2 kilograms moving at 10 meters per second. Again, we will use the GAFSA method. So what is the given here? So for the given, for the bowling ball, the mass is 5 kilograms and the velocity is 0.4 meters per second. On the other hand, for the baseball, the mass is 0.2 kilograms and the velocity is 10 meters per second. The formula that we're going to use is P equals M times V. So let's solve the momentum of each ball by substituting the given values to the formula. So let's solve first the bowling ball. So that is P equals M, which is 5 kilograms, multiplied by 0.4 meters per second, which is the velocity. And the answer is 2 kilograms meters per second. On the other hand, for the baseball, P equals for the mass, which is 0.2 kilograms, multiplied by 10 meters per second. And the answer is 2 kilograms meters per second. Therefore, our answer for the question is two balls have the same momenta. What will happen if there is a change of the mass of the object or the velocity of the object?
it simply means that there is a change in momentum. So, changes in momentum occur when there is either a change in the mass of an object. So, for this example, from this one going to this one. Or, if there is a change in velocity. For example, if the car is from rest and then it will now move to 25 meters per second. Or, both. For changing the momentum of an object, both force and the time during which the force acts are very important. So when we say impulse, it is actually the product of force and the time when the force acts. Mathematically, impulse is equal to I equals F multiplied by time. Where I is the impulse, and the SI unit for that is ns or newton second. F is the force, and the unit is n or newton. Lastly is T, which refers to the time during which the force acts, and its unit is s or second. Remember when you exert a force on something, you also exert an impulse. The effect of a force on the motion of an object depends on the magnitude of the force and the time the force acts. The stronger the force, the greater the effect is. The longer the time the force acts, the greater the effect is. Remember that. So, what is Impulse Momentum Theorem? It states that impulse is equal to the change in momentum. Mathematically, I equals change in momentum. If we're going to simplify it, it will become F multiplied by the time, which refers to the impulse, equals the mass multiplied by the final velocity minus mass multiplied by initial velocity. The relationship of impulse to momentum comes from the second law of motion. How? So from this equation, we can find the formula for force, which is F equals mass multiplied by the final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. If you could remember, Acceleration is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time. Therefore, F equals MA. And this refers to the second law of motion. The impulse momentum theorem helps us analyze a variety of circumstances where momentum is changed. Let's examine some physics in action in the real world. In particular, we will focus on the effect of collision time upon the amount of force an object experiences. Remember, force and time are inversely proportional. An object with 100 units of momentum must experience 100 units of impulse in order to be brought to a stop. So as you can observe in the table, any combination of force and time could be used to produce the 100 units of impulse necessary to stop an object with 100 units of momentum. As you can observe, the greater the time over which the collision occurs, the smaller is the force acting upon the object. Based from this, we can actually say that to minimize the effect of force on an object involved in a collision, the time must be increased. And to maximize the effect of force on an object involved in a collision, the time must be decreased. Think about riding in an out-of-control car. Would you prefer hitting a haystack or a brick wall? You wouldn't have to call on your knowledge of physics to make up your mind. Common sense tells you to choose the haystack. But 
Knowing the physics behind this helps you understand why hitting a soft object is entirely different from hitting a hard one. When hitting either the wall or the haystack and coming to a stop, the momentum is decreased by the same impulse. The same impulse does not mean the same amount of force or the same amount of time. It simply means the same product of force and time. So, to keep the force small, we extend the time. Again, to minimize the effect of force on an object involved in a collision, the time must be increased. And to maximize the effect of force on an object involved in a collision, the time must be decreased. Let me repeat. If the change in momentum occurs over a long time, the force of impact is small. However, if the change in momentum occurs over a short time, the force of impact is large. So by hitting the haystack instead of the wall, you extend the contact time. When we say contact time, this is the time during which your momentum is brought to zero. To better understand the concept of impulse momentum theorem, let's solve this sample problem. A neophyte player catches a 125 gram ball moving at 25 meters per second in 0.02 seconds. A professional player catches the same ball in one second by slightly retracting his hand during the catch. Find the forces exerted by the ball on the hands of the two players. So again, we will use the gap sum method. So our given R, the mass of the ball, which is 125 grams, and we will convert it to kilograms since the unit of mass must be in kilogram. So that is mass equals 0.125 kilograms. And the initial velocity of the ball is 25 meters per second, and its final velocity since we're going to stop the ball that will become zero meters per second. That is the final velocity. And the time for the first player is 0 0.02 second, while the second player, the time is one second. We are asked to solve for the forces exerted by the ball on the hands of the two players. And of course, the formula that we're going to use is Ft equals mv minus m multiplied by the initial velocity. Okay, let's solve first the first player. We are going to substitute the given to the formula. It will become and then simplify this one. It will be f multiplied by 0 0.02 seconds equals 0 minus 3.125 kilograms meter per second. Divide both sides by 0 0.02 seconds and the answer is negative 156.25 Newton. This is the force exerted by the hand of the catcher on the ball. The ball in turn exerts an equal but opposite reaction force to the hand which is 156.25 Newton. So for the professional player, we're going to solve it the same way we solve the first player, but the time will be one second. And if you're going to solve it on your own, the answer is negative 3.125 Newton. And the force exerted by the ball to the hand is 3.125 Newton. If the time of contact is brief, the force of impact is huge. So again, to minimize the effect of force on an object involved in a collision, the time must be increased. And to maximize the effect of force on an object involved in a collision, the time must be decreased. Do not forget that.